All right, you are welcome back to introductory mathematical analysis. And okay, we are still in chapter 13. Chapter 13. Also, we are still in chapter 13.3. Chapter 13.3. Okay, we started with chapter 13.3 in the last video. Uh, which is concavity, concavity, okay? All right, we are going to further stress on that. Okay, again, uh, recall from last video, we have this that uh, F is said to be concave up on the interval if the first derivative is increasing on that interval. Also, F is said to be concave down if the first derivative is decreasing on that interval. And we said F has an, uh, 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 a point of inflection or has an inflection point at A, number one, if it is continuous at A, number two, if it changes concavity at A. Number one, if it is continuous at A. Number two, if it changes concavity at A. Okay, now, the criteria for concavity, to find concavity, you must get your second derivative, second derivative. And then you check where the second derivative is greater than zero, that is concave up. Where the second derivative is less than zero, that is concave down in that interval. Okay, now uh, we want to just demonstrate that uh, we can have a change of concavity with no point of inflection. We can have a change of concavity with no point of inflection. Okay, and a good example for that is this function, this function 1 over x. Okay, in this function 1 over x, we are going to have uh, our first derivative of that to give us what? This can also be written as minus 1, okay? Minus x minus 2, okay? That is our first derivative. Our second derivative will be given as uh, 2x minus 3, okay? So which can be written as 2 over uh, s3, okay? That is our second derivative. Now here, we want to find where this is greater than zero, uh, which is greater than zero, yes, where the second derivative is greater than zero and where it is less than zero so that we can know uh, the concave uh, up and the concave down. Okay, how do you find this? In this now, if we equate the second derivative to zero, let me do away with this one. Okay, so if we equate the second derivative to zero, okay, you get no value for x. Okay, we get no value for x. We get we'll be getting something like this, which is not possible. So two is not equal to zero. So we, there's no value when we equate the second derivative to zero. All right, but let's look at the second derivative. At x equals to zero, the second derivative will not exist, will not be defined. Okay, that is the point to pick. At x equals to zero, the second derivative will not be defined. So at x equals to zero, we use s equals to zero to uh, divide the ring line into two. So we have uh, zero, and then we have zero. Okay, this already tells us that at x equals to zero, the second derivative is not defined. Even if in the derivative, even if in the function, in the first derivative, x equals to zero, we make this undefined. In the function itself, x equals to zero, we make it undefined. And don't forget the the point of inflection we said is, is a point of inflection at A if it is continuous at A and it changes concavity at A. So first we can see that S equals to zero here. 
is not continuous. F is not continuous at x equals to 0. F is not continuous at x equals to 0. So that tells you something. But anyway, let's still go on to find this. That already tells you that uh, uh, though it will change concavity at that point, but there's no point of reflection at that point. Okay. So let's now find our second derivative. Second derivative. Second derivative. This is our second derivative. 2 over x uh, something. Okay. All right. Uh, our second derivative of x equals to 2 over x raised to the power 3. Okay, if I pick a negative value here, if I pick negative 1, here we are going to be having what? Uh, negative uh, 2. Negative 2. That shows that negative and this is concave down. So we have concave down here. Here, if you pick a positive, it will be positive. This is positive. Then we have concave up. So we see... Concavity changes at zero. Concavity changes at zero, but zero is not part of the domain of this function. So there's no point of reflection, though concavity changes as that zero. So, but you don't have a point of reflection there. Okay, so please take note. You can only pick a point as a point of reflection when number one, that point, is continuous uh the f is continuous at that point that means that point is part of the domain of f and the second one concavity changes at that point concavity changes at that point then we can say it's a point of reflection all right that's what we have done all right so we can see there is uh, concavity changes at zero but zero is not part of reflection so f is not continuous at zero so no point of reflection although concavity changes at zero but there's no point of reflection at zero okay please take note of that take note of that all right let's take another example another example test y equals to 6s4 minus 8s3 plus 1 for concavity. For concavity and inflection points. So we want to test this for concavity and inflection points. All right. So, solution, solution, okay, the first thing is to find the first derivative, don't forget that, we find the first derivative, which is 24x3 minus 24x square, all right, now the second derivative, second derivative. All right, we have uh, 72x squared minus 48x. Okay, that is the second derivative. Okay, so now we want to know where this second derivative is greater than 0 and where this second derivative is less than 0. Okay, so here we can uh, bring out our... Uh, so equate, just equate... The second derivative to zero. Don't forget in concavity we are using, we are dealing with the second derivative. So this uh, 72x squared minus 48x equals to zero. All right, I can factorize uh, 24 out and then x. And then we are going to be getting 3x minus 2. Okay, equals to zero. Alright, this implies s equals to 0 or 3x minus 2 equals to 0, which is 3x and x equals to 2 over 3. Okay, that is it. So we find the two value of x there. So which is uh, 2 over 3. 
All right, so we use this value to divide the real line, okay? So we are going to have negative infinity to 0, 0 to 2 over 3, and then 2 over 3 to infinity, okay? All right, so if we divide that, we want to check in that interval, and at this point is 0, on top here is 0, this is 0, this is 2 over 3. Okay, so now we want to use this, we want to test the second derivative with it, y prime prime, and check if it is positive or negative. Okay, what is y prime prime 72 s square 48? Okay, let me write it somewhere here. Y prime prime is equal to 72 s square minus 48 x. Okay, that is it. Now we are going to pick a point here to put inside there to check if it is positive or negative. So if I pick like negative, uh, negative 1 and I put it here, this will be positive, then this also will be positive. So this is positive. What does that mean? It's concave up. All right, let's pick a point here in between this one. Pick a point in between this is 0, this is 2 over 3. Uh, if you pick a point like 1 over 3, yeah, like 1 over 3, okay? Now you are going to get negative, and then this is concave down, okay? If you pick a point here, uh, this will be positive, like 1, yeah, pick a point like 1, and you put it there, then this will be positive also. This will be positive also. So we now have concave up there, concave up, concave up again there. Okay, yeah. So we have concave up here, concave down, concave. So we can now write now and say, so the function uh, y that is given to us, this function given to us, this function, this function given to us, this function we have, is concave up, concave up, concave up at these intervals. Concave up at those intervals. Okay, concave up there. And concave down. Concave down at 0. 2 over 3. Okay, so that is our point of concavity. And what is the point of reflection? This is concave up here, concave down here. You see, concavity changes, and 0 is 0 part of our is, uh, is the function continuous at 0. Let's check up at 0. Yes, the function is continuous at 0, because if you put 0 here, it will make the function to be defined. All right. 2 over 3 is function continuous at 2 over 3, yes, it's also continuous there. And there's a change of concavity. Here, it changes from concave up to concave down at 0. At 2 over 3, it changes from concave down to concave up. So our point of inflation, point of inflation, point of inflation point, let me use that inflation point, or point of inflation, inflation point, Ah, x equals to 0 and 2 over 3. All right, please make sure that you understand. Ensure that uh, you understand everything. Thank you.